Welcome to Chronicles of Time Sleep Stories. Finding moments of peace in the hustle and bustle of our lives can be a big challenging. Our channel is your sanctuary, a place where captivating tales blend with soothing tones, guiding you toward restful slumber. Escape from the noise, let go of the day's stresses, and allow our stories to transport you to realms of tranquility and dreams. Whether you're seeking relaxation, meditation, or simply a good night's sleep, you're in the right place. So, settle in, close your eyes, and let the journey to serenity begin. In our unceasing journey through the corridors of life, moments of pure, unadulterated tranquility can sometimes seem as elusive as shadows at noon. The modern world is a symphony of endless noises, from the incessant hum of digital screens to the ceaseless whispers of obligations, commitments, and desires. In this symphony, our souls often search for a gentle lullaby, a melodious escape, a chance to pause, breathe, and simply be. Now, as you find yourself here in the magic of this narrative oasis, know that you've stumbled upon a sanctuary, a world where serenity isn't just a luxury, but a promise. Picture, if you will, a secluded haven, nestled amidst nature's embrace, where the wind hums lullabies, and time itself seems to tread lightly. This is where we invite you to journey with us, a place of meditation, reflection, and utter calm. Begin by taking a deep, resolute breath. Feel the cool air grace your nostrils, traveling through the depths of your lungs, filling your being with the ancient rhythms of existence. And then, as you exhale, imagine releasing the shackles of worry, stress, and the relentless march of time. Each subsequent breath is a step deeper into the heart of tranquility, a dance with the universe, an affirmation of the present moment. We live in an era where the very essence of our existence often feels fragmented. Pulled in myriad directions by demands, expectations, and the invisible threads of technology, it's easy to lose oneself. But these tales, each a gem sculpted from the rich tapestries of imagination and insight, seek to offer you a bridge. A bridge not just to sleep, but that in itself is a cherished realm of restoration, but to a state of soulful relaxation, where the world narrows down to the here and now, where every heartbeat is a reminder of life's simple beauties. These stories are not just words. They are portals. They beckon you into worlds where the pace is gentler, the colors more vivid, and the sounds harmoniously aligned with the rhythms of the cosmos. Here, amidst these tales, you'll find characters and landscapes that resonate with the deepest parts of your psyche, invoking a sense of familiarity and nostalgia. They're like old friends or forgotten dreams, waiting to welcome you back. As you immerse yourself in these narratives, let the outside world fade into soft focus. Envision your stresses and anxieties as leaves carried away by a gentle stream disappearing beyond the horizon. Let the weight of expectation, the clamor of responsibilities, and the noise of uncertainty be replaced by the soothing cadences of these stories. Every word, every phrase is a brushstroke painting a world of peace, inviting you to step in and explore. Sleep, that precious gift, is not just a physical necessity, but a balm for the soul. It's nature's way of healing, restoring, and rejuvenating. 
As you stand at the threshold of dreams, these tales are the gentle hands guiding you towards restful slumber. They remind you of the beauty of surrender, of letting go, of drifting into the comforting embrace of night. So, dear listener, as you embark on this journey with us, know that you are not alone. Through the magic of these tales, we are with you, sharing in your quest for tranquility and deep, restorative sleep. Let these stories be your anchor, your lighthouse, guiding you away from the tempests of daily life and into the calm waters of relaxation and dreams. Welcome to our sanctuary. Let the journey to serenity begin. The Wishing Fountain of Rome Chapter 1 The Coins Whisper In the heart of modern-day Rome, amidst the bustle of tourists and the timeless beauty of the city's architecture, Emily Harris, a young and curious traveler, stood before the Fontana di Trevi. Like many before her, she was drawn to the fountain's grandeur and the legend that encircled it. Holding a coin between her fingers, she closed her eyes and, half in jest, made a wish to understand the depths of Rome's past. With a flick of her wrist, the coin spiraled into the water, and at that moment, the world around her began to blur and spin. When the disorientation ceased, Emily found herself in a vastly different Rome. The modern buildings and paved streets had given way to ancient stone structures and dirt paths. The air was filled with the sound of Latin and the clatter of horse-drawn carriages. For a moment, she stood there, stunned, struggling to comprehend the transformation. As she wandered through the streets, trying to grasp her new reality, she noticed the striking differences. The Colosseum, now whole, towered majestically in the distance, its walls not yet marred by time. The Forum, which she had walked through in ruins just hours before, was alive with activity, a bustling center of commerce and discussion. Dressed in modern attire, Emily drew curious glances from the people she passed. Their clothing was a tapestry of ancient Roman fashion, a stark contrast to her own. She quickly realized the need to blend in and, finding a secluded alley, she improvised adjustments to her clothes, trying her best to mimic the styles she saw around her. Her first interaction in this ancient world was with a kind-hearted merchant who, despite being puzzled by her strange accent and mannerisms, offered her guidance. He introduced himself as Lucius and, noticing her confusion and distress, took her under his wing. He explained that she was in Rome, but not the Rome she knew. It was the Rome of antiquity, a city at the peak of its power. Lucius led her through the streets, pointing out landmarks and explaining their significance. They passed by the Pantheon, its stone a marvel of engineering, and the Baths of Caracalla, a testament to the Romans' architectural prowess. The city was a living museum, a testament to a civilization that had shaped the world. As they walked, Emily was bombarded with the sights, sounds, and smells of ancient Rome. The markets were filled with vendors selling fruits, vegetables, and meats, alongside merchants offering pottery, textiles, and jewelry. The streets were a chaotic symphony of merchants hawking their wares, citizens engaged in heated debates, and soldiers patrolling in their distinctive armor. Lucius, seeing her interest in the surroundings, shared stories of Rome's history and culture. He spoke of the city's founding, 
its battles and triumphs, and the emperors who had ruled it. Emily listened, fascinated by the depth of history that surrounded her, a history she had only read about in books. As the day turned to evening, Lucius led Emily to a small tavern tucked away in a less frequented part of the city. Here, away from the prying eyes and ears of the bustling streets, Emily shared her story. She spoke of her life in the future, her impromptu wish at the Fontana di Trevi, and her sudden arrival in ancient Rome. Lucius listened, his expression a mix of skepticism and wonder. After a moment of contemplation, Lucius suggested that Emily's arrival might be tied to the legend surrounding the Fontana di Trevi. He had heard tales of its mystical powers, stories passed down through generations, tales of wishes granted in unexpected ways. He proposed that perhaps Emily's wish had been interpreted literally by the forces behind the fountain, transporting her to the past to experience Rome's history firsthand. The suggestion seemed fantastical, but in a world where she had been transported through time, Emily found herself open to possibilities she would have dismissed before. She resolved to uncover the mystery of her situation, to understand the forces that brought her here and, hopefully, find a way back to her own time. Lucius, intrigued by Emily's tale and driven by a desire to help, offered to assist her. He proposed that they seek the counsel of a wise woman known for her knowledge of ancient lore and legends. This woman, he believed, might have insights into the Fontana di Trevi's secrets and Emily's predicament. That night, as Emily lay in a small room Lucius had secured for her, she pondered her circumstances. She was in a time and place she had only ever dreamed of exploring, a living, breathing history that she had the unique opportunity to experience. Yet, the desire to return to her own time, to the life and people she knew, weighed heavily on her mind. The following morning, armed with determination and accompanied by Lucius, Emily set out on her quest to unravel the mystery of the Fontana di Trevi and her unexpected journey through time. Their first destination was the home of the wise woman, a journey that would take them deeper into the heart of ancient Rome and its enigmas. As they navigated the streets of Rome, moving from the familiar grandeur of the city's center to its more obscure and arcane locations, Emily couldn't help but feel a sense of awe. She was walking through history, witnessing firsthand the daily life of a world she had only known through the pages of textbooks and the remnants of ruins. The Rome of antiquity was a city of contrasts, magnificent and imposing in its architecture, yet intimate in the interactions of its people. The streets buzzed with the energy of commerce, politics, and daily life. Senators and soldiers, merchants and slaves, artists and philosophers, all were part of the tapestry that made up the city. As they made their way to the wise woman's abode, Emily's mind raced with questions. How had a simple wish transported her across time? What were the true powers of the Fontana di Trevi? And, most importantly, was there a way for her to return to her own time? Chapter 2 Lost in Time In ancient Rome, Emily Harris, now a stranger in a familiar city, embarked on her quest to unravel the mystery of her sudden travel through time. Accompanied by Lucius, her newfound guide and ally, Emily navigated the labyrinthine streets and alleys, her modern sensibilities clashing with the ancient world around her. Their first destination was the home of an elderly scholar, reputed for his vast knowledge of Roman history and legends. 
Tucked away in the quieter part of the city, the scholar's study was a treasure trove of scrolls, books, and artifacts. The scholar, a wizened old man with keen eyes that missed nothing, listened intently as Emily recounted her tale. After a moment of thoughtful silence, the scholar shared his insights. He spoke of ancient texts that mentioned temporal anomalies linked to powerful relics and locations around Rome. The Fontana di Trevi, he suggested, might be one such site, imbued with energies that could transcend time. However, he warned, such journeys were rare and often fraught with dangers, both known and unforeseen. Determined to find a way back to her own time, Emily asked about the Fontana di Trevi's history. The scholar explained that the fountain, though not as grand in ancient times as it was in hers, had always been surrounded by tales of magic and mystery. It was said to be built atop an ancient spring with mystical properties, a spring that predated even Rome itself. Armed with this knowledge, Emily and Lucius set out to explore the ancient version of the Fontana di Trevi. The fountain, less ornate than its future counterpart, still held a sense of awe. Emily felt a chill run down her spine as she approached it, her mind filled with questions about its true nature and power. As they investigated the area around the fountain, they encountered a mysterious figure, a cloaked man who seemed to be watching them with interest. Before they could approach him, he vanished into the crowd, leaving Emily with a sense of unease. She couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to her situation than met the eye, that forces beyond her understanding were at play. Determined to learn more, Emily and Lucius delved deeper into the city's underbelly, where the polished facade of Rome gave way to the grittier aspects of its daily life. They visited sibyls and soothsayers, seeking anyone who might have knowledge of temporal magic or the fountain's secrets. Their journey took them to the heart of the Sibura, a densely populated district known for its lively, if somewhat notorious, atmosphere. Here, Amidst the crowded taverns and bustling markets, they heard whispers of a secret society that dabbled in arcane arts, a group that might hold the key to Emily's predicament. Navigating this maze of information and rumor, Emily found herself drawn into the complexities of Roman society. She witnessed the stark contrast between the opulence of the patrician class and the struggle of the plebeians. The grandeur of the public buildings and the magnificence of the Colosseum were offset by the squalor and chaos of the city's poorer quarters. Throughout her journey, Emily grappled with the challenges of her situation. She had to adapt to the customs and language of ancient Rome, often relying on Lucius to bridge the gaps in her understanding. Her modern perspective occasionally clashed with the societal norms of the time, leading to moments of confusion and conflict. Despite these challenges, Emily's resolve never wavered. With each step, she unraveled a little more of the mystery surrounding the Fontana di Trevi and her unexpected journey. The city, with its rich history and vibrant culture, captivated her even as she longed for the familiarity of her own time. One evening, while traversing the moonlit streets near the Tiber River, Emily and Lucius were confronted by the cloaked figure they had seen earlier. This time, he revealed himself, introducing himself as Gaius, a member of the secret society they had heard about. He claimed to have information about the Fontana di Trevi and its powers, but insisted that they meet him at a more secure location to discuss it further. With a mix of apprehension and curiosity, Emily agreed to the meeting. The next night, 
at a secluded spot outside the city walls, Gaius shared the society's knowledge. The Fontana di Trevi, he revealed, was an ancient site of power where the veil between times was thin. The society, guardians of Rome's mystical secrets, had long monitored the fountain, ensuring that its powers were not abused. Gaius explained that Emily's arrival was no mere accident. It was the result of a rare alignment of celestial and mystical energies. However, he warned, such events often attracted the attention of those who sought to exploit the fountain's powers for their purposes. As Emily listened, she realized the gravity of her situation. Her journey through time was not just a personal ordeal. It was part of a larger, more dangerous game, a game that involved shadowy factions vying for power in ancient Rome. Gaius offered his assistance, promising to help Emily find a way back to her time. But, he cautioned, the path would not be easy. It required navigating the intricate web of Roman politics and magic, a task fraught with peril. Determined to return home, Emily, with Lucius and Gaius's help, embarked on a new phase of her journey. She delved into the arcane lore of ancient Rome, seeking clues and knowledge that would help her unlock the Fontana di Trevi's secrets. Her adventure took her to the highest echelons of Roman society, where senators and nobles played a high-stakes game of power and influence. It also took her to the city's hidden corners, where cults and mystics practiced their rites away from prying eyes. With each discovery, Emily pieced together the puzzle of the fountain's power and her role in the unfolding events. She learned of an ancient prophecy that spoke of a traveler from another time, a prophecy that some believed she was destined to fulfill. As the pieces of the mystery came together, Emily found herself at the center of a struggle that spanned time and space. She had to use all her wit, courage, and newfound knowledge to navigate the dangers that surrounded her. Throughout her journey, Emily's perspective on Rome and its history evolved. She saw the city not just as a place of ancient ruins and historical facts, but as a living, breathing entity shaped by its people and their stories. She experienced the triumphs and tragedies of Rome, the beauty of its art and culture, and the depth of its mysteries. As she inched closer to unraveling the Fontana di Trevi's secrets, Emily also grew as a person. She discovered strengths she never knew she had and formed bonds that transcended the boundaries of time. The realm of antiquity, with all its wonders and perils, had become a part of her, a chapter in her life story that would stay with her forever. Chapter 3 The Riddle of the Fountain Emily's journey through ancient Rome, guided by Gaius and Lucius, had transformed from a mere quest for answers into a deep dive into the city's mystical undercurrents. The more she learned about the Fontana di Trevi's history and its connection to the city's fate, the more she realized that her accidental journey through time was intertwined with ancient prophecies and secretive powers. One crucial piece of information that Gaius shared was about an ancient text, known as the Codex Temporis, rumored to contain knowledge about the mystical properties of various sites in Rome, including the Fontana di Trevi. This codex, believed to be kept in the hidden vaults of the Temple of Vesta, could hold the key to Emily's return to her time. Their quest to locate the Codex Temporis led Emily, Gaius, and Lucius into the intricate world of Roman religion and politics. The Temple of Vesta, sacred and closely guarded, 
was a repository of knowledge and religious artifacts. Gaining access to it required careful planning and the navigation of a complex web of alliances and rivalries within the Roman priesthood. As they worked on their plan to access the temple, Emily immersed herself in the daily life of ancient Rome. She learned the language and customs, blending in with the citizens, and gathered information that could aid their quest. She visited the bustling forums, the grand temples, and the lively public baths, each place offering a piece of the vast puzzle that was Rome. Her interactions with the people of Rome, from senators and soldiers to merchants and slaves, painted a vivid picture of the city's social and political dynamics. She witnessed firsthand the power struggles that defined the Roman Republic, the opulence of the patricians, and the hardships of the lower classes. Throughout her journey, Emily also grappled with the moral complexities of her situation. She was a modern woman with knowledge of history that could influence the course of events in ancient Rome. She wrestled with the implications of her actions, aware that even the smallest interference could alter the timeline. The day they decided to make their move to access the Codex Temporis, Emily felt a mix of excitement and apprehension. Under the cover of night, they navigated the narrow, winding streets to the Temple of Vesta. Using a combination of cunning, knowledge gleaned from their research, and a bit of luck, they managed to enter the Temple's vault. Inside, they found a treasure trove of ancient knowledge. Scrolls, texts, and artifacts filled the room, each a piece of Rome's story past. After a tense search, they located the Codex Temporis, an unassuming scroll that belied its significance. The Codex was written in an ancient dialect that took Emily's every ounce of linguistic skill to decipher. It spoke of the Fontana di Trevi as a place where the veils of time were thin, a site where the past, present, and future could converge under certain celestial alignments. It mentioned a ritual that, if performed correctly, could harness the fountain's power to traverse these veils. Armed with this knowledge, Emily and her companions planned the ritual. However, they were aware that their actions had not gone unnoticed. The secret society that Gaius belonged to had rivals, factions that also sought to control the city's mystical sites. These rivals, aware of Emily's presence and her quest, were now moving to stop her. The night of the ritual, Emily stood before the Fontana di Trevi, the ancient version less grandiose than its future counterpart, but no less awe-inspiring. The air was charged with a palpable energy, the moon casting a silver glow over the city. As they began the ritual, Using the Codex as a guide, they felt the world around them shift and warp. Time seemed to bend, the water in the fountain glowing with an ethereal light. But before they could complete the ritual, they were interrupted by the arrival of their adversaries. A tense confrontation ensued, a clash of wills and knowledge. Emily and her allies fought to protect the ritual, understanding that their failure could mean being trapped in time forever. The struggle was not just physical, but also a battle of arcane knowledge, as both sides employed ancient rites and incantations. In the midst of this chaos, Emily focused on the completion of the ritual. Drawing upon everything she had learned about ancient Rome and the mystical forces at play, she channeled her will into the ritual's completion. As the final words were spoken, a blinding light enveloped the fountain and the fabric of time tore open. 
Emily was caught in a maelstrom of temporal energy, her vision filled with flashes of Rome's past and future. She saw the rise and fall of empires, the ebb and flow of the city's fortunes, and glimpses of her own time, so far yet so close. When the light subsided and the world stilled, Emily found herself back in modern-day Rome, the familiar sounds of the city filling her ears. She stood before the Fontana di Trevi, now surrounded by tourists and the hustle of contemporary life. The ancient coin she had used in the ritual lay at her feet, a tangible reminder of her incredible journey. Overwhelmed with relief and joy, Emily picked up the coin, holding it tight in her hand. She had returned to her time, her journey through ancient Roman experience that would forever shape her. In the days that followed, Emily reflected on her adventure. She had walked the streets of Rome as few others had, experiencing its history firsthand. She had faced dangers and challenges that had tested her strength and resolve. And she had uncovered mysteries that had changed her understanding of the world. The experience had transformed Emily. She was no longer just a tourist in Rome, she was a part of its history, a link between the past and the present. She had gained a deeper appreciation for the city, a connection to its timeless spirit. Emily's journey through time, though unbelievable to some, became a cherished part of her life story. She shared her tale with those she trusted, her words a testament to the power of history and the mysteries that lay hidden in the world's ancient places. As she walked the streets of modern Rome, Emily saw the city with new eyes. She recognized the echoes of the past and the present, the layers of history that shaped the city's identity. The Fontana di Trevi, once just a beautiful monument, was now a symbol of her extraordinary journey, a journey that had taken her through the veils of time and back. Chapter 4 Return to the Present With the ancient coin firmly in her hand, standing before the Fontana di Trevi in modern Rome, Emily Harris was overwhelmed by a flood of emotions. She had traversed through time, experienced the depths of ancient Rome, and had now returned to her own world, a world that seemed both familiar and entirely new. As she walked away from the fountain, the sights and sounds of contemporary Rome enveloped her. The bustling streets, the modern architecture juxtaposed with historical sites, and the flow of tourists and locals alike were stark contrasts to the ancient city she had just left. Yet, beneath it all, Emily could sense the eternal heartbeat of Rome, unchanged through the centuries, and in the days following her return, Emily struggled to process her extraordinary journey. She found herself walking the streets of Rome, each step a reminder of her adventure. The city's landmarks, once simple tourist attractions, now held deeper meanings. The Colosseum, the Roman Forum, the Pantheon, each was a link to the past she had lived and breathed. Haunted by her experiences, Emily sought out a quiet cafe to gather her thoughts. There, over a cup of espresso, she pinned down her story, afraid that the details might fade like a dream. As she wrote, the events of her journey took on a surreal quality, almost unbelievable, yet undeniably real. Realizing the uniqueness of her experience, Emily knew she had a responsibility to share her story. She reached out to historians and scholars, narrating her journey through time. While some were skeptical, others were fascinated, 
seeing in her tale a possibility to understand more about Rome's mysterious past and the legends that had persisted through time. Emily's story, incredible as it was, began to gain attention. She was invited to speak at universities and historical societies where her first-hand account of ancient Rome provided invaluable insights into the daily life and culture of the city. Her descriptions of the political intrigues, the social dynamics, and the spiritual beliefs of ancient Romans offered a unique perspective that no modern research could provide. Amidst her newfound role as a bridge between the past and the present, Emily grappled with the personal transformations she had undergone. Her journey had changed her perception of history. It was no longer a series of dates and events in textbooks, but a living, breathing tapestry of human experiences. She also realized the profound impact of her journey on her understanding of fate and destiny. The experience had shown her that the course of history was not a fixed path, but a fluid, ever-changing river shaped by the actions and decisions of individuals. Emily's adventure had also imbued her with a newfound appreciation for the cultural heritage and historical legacy of cities like Rome. She became an advocate for historical preservation, using her story to highlight the importance of safeguarding the past for future generations. Her return to the present was not just a physical journey back to her time, but also a metaphorical journey of self-discovery. Emily found within herself a resilience and courage she hadn't known before. The challenges she had faced in ancient Rome the decisions she had made and the dangers she had overcome had forged her into a stronger, more confident individual. As the weeks turned into months, Emily's life in Rome evolved. She enrolled in historical studies, eager to learn more and to contextualize her unique experiences within the broader tapestry of human history. Her evenings were often spent at the Fontana di Trevi, now a place of deep personal significance. Sometimes, as she sat by the fountain, watching the water cascade over its sculptures, Emily would close her eyes and let her mind wander back to ancient Rome. She could almost hear the bustling markets through the cobblestone streets under her feet, and see the vibrant life of a city that had existed over two millennia ago. One evening, as the sun set over the city, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink, Emily met a group of tourists at the fountain. They were tossing coins into the water, making wishes as countless others had done before them. Emily smiled, sharing with them the legend of the Fontana di Trevi, but keeping to herself the true extent of its magic. As she interacted with the tourists, Emily realized that she had become a guardian of Rome's history, a living link to its past. Her experience, though personal and unique, was a testament to the eternal spirit of the city, a spirit that had endured empires, wars, and the passage of time. Her story, the tale of a modern woman who had walked the streets of ancient Rome became a legend in its own right. It was a story that captivated those who heard it, a reminder of the mysteries and wonders that history held. In time, Emily Harris became known as a respected historian, her insights and perspectives shaped by her incredible journey through time. She continued to explore the depths of Rome's past, her experiences in ancient Rome guiding her research and understanding. Her journey through time had started with a simple wish and a coin tossed into a fountain. It had taken her on an adventure that spanned centuries, an adventure that had revealed the mysteries of the Fontana di Trevi and the heart of Rome itself. 
As she stood by the fountain, watching the water flow and the people around her, Emily knew that her journey was far from over. It was a journey that would continue as long as she walked the streets of Rome, as long as she sought to uncover the secrets of the past, and as long as she remembered the timeless dance of history and destiny.